Module 7, the 6 dynasties dated to 265 to 581 CE and Sui dynasty dated to 581 to 618 CE. I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department, drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. I am going to speak on the Chinese art. The sixth dynasty's period described the period of nearly four centuries between the fall of Han dynasty and the reunification of the empire under the Sui. During the sixth dynasty's period, Buddhism likewise became the great patron of the art. Mahayan Buddhism was centrally a major stimulus to the Chinese achievement in stone and clay figural sculpture. Painting was the most important medium for the development of the native style and it was from the 6th dynasty's period that the earliest Chinese masters were known. He Shi Ho's sixth canon of painting is the earliest of these. A text of fundamental importance in any study of Chinese painting theory. Little remains of painting from the 6th dynasty's period and much of that little is either tomb murals or copies of paintings incised on stone or other hard material. The ravages of war in the 6th dynasty's period made contemporary Chinese painting rare even for the collectors of the succeeding Tang dynasty. The painting of this period shows the influence of Central Asia that is Central Asian string drapery style, the elongated style and the waterfall drapery. The term six dynasties hardly describe the period of nearly four centuries from 220 to 589 CE between the fall of Han dynasty and the reunification of the empire under the Sui. During the 6th dynasty's period, Buddhism likewise became the great patron of the art. Mahayan Buddhism was certainly a major stimulus to the Chinese achievement in stone and clay figural sculpture. The disintegration of the Han Empire in the early 3rd century AD was followed by the long period of division into smaller states, none of which succeeded in conquering the other and ruling the whole territory of China until the end of 6th century. In general, South China was not noted for its cave sites because traditional art of the painting already flourished there as did animal and tomb sculptures. In North China, the foreign influence was more and as such one can find more Buddhist material in great cave sites. Among the archaic style and its representative sculptures is the colossal Buddha made up of stone and in cave 20, Yun Gang, Shangxi, China belonging to 6th dynasty's period dated to second half of 5th century CE. The tradition of carving into the living rock was probably imported from India. The colossal figures with the other colossal figures, some standing are found in other caves of Yungang. They are related to the sculptures at Bamiyan and to predecessors now lost to the enormous images at Elchi. Drapery is derived from the Brahmian string pattern and the face showing traces of Gandhar style gives the impression of a hybrid and stiff conformation.
the porch of cave 7 yungang near datong shangxi china belonging to 6th dynasty period second half to 5th century ce shows a typical central asian proliferation of images by simple addition without much symmetry above one finds a carefully worked out order in the lower frieze and a symmetrically balanced mixture the images seem to have been added one after the other with no pre-existing plan as donor after donor ordered and dedicated a carving as regards its coloring much of the existing coloring is modern at the bottom for example the original coloring which exists is of similar quality bright blues reds greens and whites were flatly applied denying the sculptural form metal images relatively few metal images are found to the 6th dynasty period shakyamuni seated on the lion throne this is the front of the mandarola with the seven adi buddhas symmetrically spaced on the inner part of his mandarola is dated to 477 ce and the back of the mandarola eight scenes from the life of buddha are shown in low relief it is a glint bronze belonging to 6th dynasties and at present in m nita collection tokyo these images combine the chinese emphasis on linearity as seen in the flames of the mandarola another example is of a shakyamuni and prabhu ratna dated to 518 ce made up of glint bronze belonging to 6th dynasty period and at present in the musee gumet paris here two buddhas shakyamuni the historical buddha and prabhu ratna are seated side by side the story of this scene is related in the lotus sutra shakyamuni seated on vulture peak had begun to expound the buddhist law as it is presented in the lotus sutra when a stupa appeared in the sky shakyamuni explained to the multitude that the stupa contained the relics of prabhu ratna a buddha who had achieved nirvana aeons before but had vowed to be present whenever the lotus law was being preached then shakyamuni arose stood in the sky and opened the stupa revealing prabhu ratna shakyamuni sat down beside him and continued his discourse mandarolas with incised head halos behind them seated on a throne supported by lions flanking a caryatid a design of a kneeling priest holding a censer is incised on the bronze base in this altar piece one finds the elongated proportions sharp nose almond eyes bewitching smile and waterfall drapery one finds the elongated proportions sharp nose almond eyes bewitching smile and waterfall drapery such glit bronzes were made in some quantity as portable altars for the family use or as offering to the temples and very often they are inscribed and dated the outer band of the mandarola is decorated with flame pattern motif monster mask this is a door ring holder pu shao it is made up of gilt bronze and dated to 550 to 577 ad at present it is in the cleveland museum of art the monsters whether attendants or caryatids 
at Hisang Tang Shan are among the most imaginative and sculpturally convincing products of the period. Like other members of the same family in gilt bronze, they are bizarre arrangements of volumes and voids as well as being representational grots. They take their proper place in their long history of Chinese secular sculpture, though here they supplement a foreign imagery and faith. Sculpture The continuity of native traditions is notable in the subsidiary sculpted figures of Buddhist stila and in cave temples. In cave number 13, a sculpted wall niche dated to 527 CE, belonging to Northern V dynasty, is in a very low relief. The figures have become much more slender and elegant, necks longer and emphasis is on the drapery. In the temple stela, sculpture in stone was to be found of two main types, one rising to a flame-shaped point and with high relief images, the other a vertical tablet with figure carved in low relief or cut into niches. An example of Shakyamuni triad dated to 537 CE, it is a stella limestone belonging to Eastern V dynasty and at present in the Cleveland Museum of Art. Here. The smile of Shakyamuni is more refined, gracious and immediate. The eyes have a characteristic Chinese linearity. Then Yun Gang, the long neck and waterfall drapery are carved in low relief as if painted. In the outer band of the halo, one can easily discern a demon mask. This mask dominates the lotus scroll derived from the Buddhist iconography. The tablet-shaped stela takes its form from the traditional Chinese commemorative tablet, but in the Buddhist memorial stela dated to 554 CE, made up of grey limestone, belonging to 6th dynasty's period and at present in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. The sculpture is adapted to the requirements of Buddhism. In effect, the ingredients of cave temple are here, placed on a Chinese inscribed tablet. But monkeys and figures of acrobats are depicted with an un-Indian angularity and the unique element is the waterfall drapery. But the figures of the angels, demons and lions are carved in a fully Chinese rhythmical style. The seal, the inscription and the long dedicatory inscription are carryovers from the Chinese commemorative tablet. The tablet is simply divided into registers and these in turn are divided into niches for figures in an arrangement by no means always symmetrical. The lower registers display Chinese motifs, a donor, horses and chimeras or lions. Trees flank a scene in a pagoda providing a landscape setting and an example of pictorial influence on stone sculpture. The execution of landscape elements in stone relief was particularly significant in the development of Chinese painting. Squatting caryatid monster belongs to 6th dynasty's period dated to 6th century CE and at present in the Cleveland Museum of Art. Caryatids beneath pillars flanking a niche containing a Buddhist image. This squatting figure is of a square mouth, buck teeth, 
great pot belly four paws planted on haunches shows vigor and humor characteristic of the great chinese animal sculpture the chimera the chimera is found from the tomb of hisio hisi tomb of nanjing jiangsu belonging to 6 dynasties period dated to 518 ce have magical qualities of chinese animal sculpture such powerful images flanked by the spirit paths serve as honor guards for the funeral cortege and as protectors of the site painting painting was the most important medium for the development of native style and it was from the 6th dynasty's period that the earliest chinese masters were known painting at last became a fine art practiced by masters whose names and works are recorded their new consciousness of power of the artist's imagination gave birth to a tradition of critical and theoretical writing on art he shows six canon of painting is the earliest of these a text of fundamental importance in any study of chinese painting theory these six canons represent general principles the first and most important canon is animation through spirit consonants or rhythm in painting an expression of the artist's heavenly inspiration the second canon as the structural method in the use of brush as chinese paintings were judged on the character of individual brush strokes the third canon is the fidelity to the object in portraying forms implies a certain degree of naturalism when portraying a horse one is governed by the conformation of a horse the fourth canon in conformity to kind in applying colors the fifth canon is proper planning in the placing of elements that is the picture which should correspond to principle and thus in some degree to natural law the sixth canon is transmission of experience of past in making copies little remains of paintings from the 6th dynasty's period and much that little is either tomb murals or copies of paintings incised on stone on other hard material the ravages of war in the 6th dynasty's period made contemporary chinese painting rare even for collectors of the succeeding tang dynasty a few good copies in the style of these early masters and one painting that seems to breathe the very spirit is attributed to gu kai chi the subject of the painting is the instructress writing down her admonition for the benefit of two young ladies this is the last scene from the admonition of the instructress to the ladies of the palace it is a hand scroll painted on silk with ink and some color mostly red with a little blue it is at present in the british museum london iconographically the picture is thoroughly confucian as the title suggests it is a series of illustrations accompanying the text of a didactic poem of the 3rd century ce setting forth rules of moral behavior proper to the court ladies of the early 6th dynasty period the very word admonitions implies confucian 
rectitude. At the end of the scroll, the moral tone is confirmed by the figure of the instructress holding a scroll of paper on which she writes, while the court ladies who are presumably to follow her percepts stand or kneel respectfully before her. The painting shows impressive liner mastery, particularly in the handling of the drapery, where the effect is one of swirling and fluttering movement. These females look like the tomb figurines of the early 6th dynasty's period. The headgear is appropriate to the 4th century and the voluminous garments, rather square skulls, slightly pointed chins, noses and sloping shoulders are completely of the period. In the scroll, the third scene is the landscape with Hunter. The fifth scene is a bad scene. The admonition scroll is extraordinary also in having one of the earliest representation of landscape in Chinese painting. Chang Sang Yu artist's painted hand scroll is of the five planets and 28 celestial constellations now in the Ebe collection in the Osaka Municipal Museum illustrates the style of this master. The rainbow hues where line tends to disappear among the varied colors and only comes to the fore on the whites or in the hands or faces of figures. The calligraphy is formal and interesting. The Sui dynasty is dated to 581 to 618 was a dynasty of only two emperors and in historical terms it echoed the situation in Qin and Han dynasty periods. Emperor Wen Di reigned from 589 to 604 AD, tried to consolidate the empire by creating or re-establishing institutions designed to preserve unity, an administrative apparatus in which the same language had to be spoken, a measure taken to counter the use of dialects, the publication of a phonetic encyclopedia, Bi Tang Shu Chao, to provide everyone with a common basis of knowledge, the building of a granaries the allocation of land to the peasants, the construction of irrigation system to improve agriculture and the building of the imperial canal linking north and south of the country. Yang Di, who reigned from 605 to 617, the second and the last Sui emperor then went rather too far in exploiting the people. This ambitious building project called for the unpopular compulsory conscriptions of huge numbers of workers. Meanwhile, he was deploying large armies in the west against incursions of invading Turkey peoples. However, two important dates marking mainland China's contact with Taiwan, then known as Liu Kui, fall into his reign in AD 607. Chinese envoys visited Liu Kui and they were followed in 610 by a troop of 10,000 men. From that date on, the slow but steady settlement of the island by mainland Chinese went ahead. Economic reasons led to the murder of the second Sui emperor by conspirators. The Sui dynasty may have been to short duration, but it laid the foundations for the cultural flowering 
of a unified empire under the Tang rulers. The Sui Emperor Yang Di's imperial garden Chi Yuan, a project undertaken to demonstrate his imperial power, must itself have been a landscape garden of vast extent. It is said to have included among its features a lake 10 kilometers in length with three islands of the immortals in it. The concept of Yang Di's garden was a legacy of the Han period. The sources also speak of 16 water palaces within the complex, each surrounded by a garden of its own. This characteristic of Chinese garden remained part of the Chinese horticultural tradition up to the landscape garden. Chi Shi commissioned by the Do Vegar Empress at the end of 19th century. Kitchen scene with figures washing dishes belongs to Su period. These are the ceramic models given as grave goods. Kneeling man washing dishes, standing woman washing dishes, dish washing bench and this is at present in the Hubei Provincial Museum. This replica of a scene from daily life clearly shows a kitchen servant and a woman washing dishes as well as various household utensils. The group also contains an equally lifelike cook and his assistant who is lighting a fire which is not shown. Both art and literature bear equivalent testimony to the culture of this period. Finds from tomb illustrate the continuity of the process whereby the Sui dynasty rulers adopted the aesthetic ideas of their predecessors, in turn conveying them to their own successors. That continuity is reflected in both the paintings of the Sui period, although they are known to us only from the later copies and the ceramics that can be dated to this time. An example is of a saddled and bridled horse belonging to Sui dynasty. This is a funerary ceramic model, pale green glaze on sand colored base in the collection of SMBPK Museum Berlin. The rich ornamentation on the horse, for instance, appears in a similar form on unglazed pieces of the Bivy period and the pale green glaze may be of the same technological origin as the celadon glaze applied to items of southern manufacture. Various sculptures in stone and metal optimize to unification of style that took place during the Sui dynasty. A bronze Amitabh altarpiece in the Museum of Fine Arts Boston dated to 593 CE represent the Buddha of the West. Amitabh seated beneath the jewel tree of the western paradise and attended by two disciples and two bodhisattvas, a pair of lions and a pair of guardians flank an incised burner directly in front of the Buddha. These last set into holes in the bronze altar base. The Amitabh altarpiece is first of all a composition carefully balanced about a central axis. Individual figures show minor variations in pose such as the inclination of the head of the Bodhisattva on the right, but careful symmetry is the rule. The style is one of simplicity and restraint with a harmony between the major and minor figures not formed in earlier composition. There is no longer a discrepancy 
between the iconography and style of the major Buddha images and the qualities of the attendant figure. And if the lions and guardians from the group now in a private collection in Europe were present, one could see the same unity of style in them as well. It is a mode based on the columnar style of the Northern Chi dynasty and from this great tongue style develops. But before we turn to the tongue international style, one has to examine the extension of the six dynastic styles into Japan.